This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, you're going to learn how to simplify radical expressions. In our first section, we're going to look at radicals that have only numbers. In our second section, we're going to look at radicals that contain algebraic expressions. Let's get started. So let's take a look at our first example. Let's call this problem 1a. So here we've got the square root of 18. You know, traditionally, we just call this the square root, sometimes just say radical 18. But um, we don't see this number, but there's really a 2 here. We say it, we say square root. And so when you say that word square, it kind of indicates that number two. So we call the index the two. Now I'm going to erase it because when the index is two, there's really no need to write it. All right, well, let's talk about how to reduce this. So let's take this number 18 and let's use something called a factor tree. So we break down 18 using any numbers we can think of, any integer numbers we can think of that multiply to be 18. When we find a number that cannot be broken down anymore, we circle it, that's a prime number. So I'm going to break down uh, 9 is 3 times 3. And again, these are prime numbers. We circle them. The numbers that are not prime are called composite numbers. So you keep on breaking up those composite numbers till we get to primes. All right, well, what we're going to do now is take these primes that we just have. And what we're going to do is write the 2, 3, 3, the 2 times 3 times 3 underneath the radical. And what I'd like to do now is simplify this. See, if I use the calculator to find the square root of 18, it's going to give us a decimal number. And that's not the point of what we're doing here when we talk about simplifying radicals. I don't want to get a decimal number. Instead, I want to get a simplified radical. Like, for instance, you may notice that 3 times 3 is 9, right? 9. I could take the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Unfortunately, I can't do anything with this 2. See, this 2 is stuck underneath the square root sign because there's nothing I could do with it. All I could do is take the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, and there you have it. So we've reduced this radical as much as possible. Let's take a look at another example. So let's take a look at problem 1b. So let's take a look and see what happens when our index is different. So now this is called the cube root of 54. OK, what's the cube root? Well, first, let's take 54 and make a factor tree. Well, let's see. Hmm, it's even. I could divide it by 2. 2 times 27 is equal to 54. So you circle the 2. Uh, I could break up 27. I see that it is divisible by 3. 3 times 9 is 27. And again, 3 is prime. I'm circling my prime numbers. 9 is 3 times 3. And those are, of course, primes. So what you do now is you put this underneath the cube root. And again, I like to put these in order. 2, 3, 3, 3, from smallest to largest. Now, last time we took the square root, and notice I paired up the numbers. Um, well, really, what I'm doing here now, the index, 3, tells me that I have to arrange things in triplets. That's because I'm taking the cube root of this 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And since 3 cubed is 27, the cube root of this is 3. Now, I don't know if you've caught on to this pattern that I'm using, but the index tells you how to group. Once you've found this triplet group, one of those items from the group comes on the outside. The 2 that's left here underneath that doesn't triplet up with anything stays inside. This looks like the right answer, but remember to always include your index. I don't want the problem to change to square root. I want this to stay to cube root. So this problem is 3 cube root of 2 is the answer. 
So in section two, we're going to take a look at our first example. This is problem 2a. We're going to look at radical expressions, but now these radical expressions are going to t contain some algebra. By algebra, I mean there's going to be some letters, some variables, if you will. Now, again, here I'm not writing the index, so again, we call this the square root. So what I'm going to do is, like I did the other problems, is I'm going to break up 40 using a factor tree. So I notice that this is 4 times 10. Both of those are composite numbers, so I'm going to break these up. 2 times 2 is 4. Both 2s are prime. 10 is 2 times 5. And both of those are prime numbers. They can't be broken up anymore. Okay, so what do you do? You now put this underneath the radical. So I put 2. 2, 2, 5. Okay, so that's what we did before in section 1. Now what's different is I also have x cubed. So I'm putting 3x's because that's really what x cubed means. I got 3x's. Then I've got y to the fourth. So I'm going to write 4y's. I'm just going to extend this radical so everything fits underneath the radical. Okay, so again, what I want to do is I want to start the circle. Now I'm going to change my color here of the pen so we really could see it. This is going to become more dramatic here. But again, since it's square root, right? This was square root. Then what I'm supposed to do is look for pairs. Okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. So let's see. I see a pair of twos. Uh, I see a pair of x's, right? So it's like I'm looking for twins. There you go. Okay, so I've circled all the twins that I possibly can. Okay, now what? For each one of these groups, one of those items is going to go on the outside. Okay, like for instance, when I take the square root of four, that's really what this is, the square root of four is two. When I take the square root of x squared, it's x. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of another y squared is y. What's left underneath the square root? Anything that did not get paired up. I see the 2, 5, and x. 2, 5, and x. So my answer here would be 2x y squared square root of 10x. And that's the final answer to this problem. Let's take a look at another problem. All right, so here is problem 2B. So let's take a look at a problem that has a different radical. Instead of square root, you can see this problem has a cube root. And I'm going to use different letters here. Instead of X's and Y's, you can see C's and D's. Okay, so this is a a bigger problem in a sense because this number 250 is larger. Uh, I notice that this is 10 times 25. 10 is 2 times 5 and both 2 and 5 are prime numbers. 25 is 5 times 5. Actually that broke up fairly easily. Okay so what we do is now put all of the prime factors underneath the radical. And you can see that I have a 2, 5, 5, 5. I've got 5 C's and I've got a bunch of D's. There's 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I got 7 D's, 5 C's, and those other letters. Okay, I had to kind of write it in a different row, but all of these factors are underneath the radical. Now this time, I'm dealing with the cube root, so now I'm going to have to look for triplets. Okay, so let's see. Let's circle the triplets. Yeah, okay, here's a triplet. Here's a triplet. Here's another triplet. And here's a triplet also. So it looks like all my triplets are, of course, circled. When I see a triplet of fives, that means one of these fives is going to come up on the outside. I see a group of C's. I see a group of D's. 
I see another group of D's. What's left? Okay, so underneath the cube root sign, I have a two, two C's, and a D. So now what we do is play cleanup. We multiply all this together. So this is five C D squared, and we've got the cube root of two C squared D. And there's our final answer. Make sure you go to mathguide.com, check out our other instructional videos, our interactive quizzes, and of course our text-based lessons. Take care.